Okay, I want this situated every day where she can hear it. Lene, put her, her headphone in here. Ladies and gentlemen, turn in your Bibles to our foundational passage as we deal with how to overcome temptation, part 150, dealing with the temptation and sin of pride, the most dangerous of all sins, the foundation of most sins. Onward Christian Soldiers Discipleship Class, number 274. Our foundational verse in this series is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Our uh, next passage of Scripture from the Word of God is Psalm 12, verses 3 and 4. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said with our tongue, Will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Holy Father God, in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I praise you and I thank you so much for the earlier service and the earlier prayer meeting before the service. And Holy Father, God, we praise you and we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your grace. And help us all to always be people who pray what we mean and mean what we pray. And Holy Father, God, we individually uh, and hopefully collectively confess our sins, our failures, and our faults. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins as we from our hearts, by your grace, we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lord, crush and crucify our pride and our flesh and the old man within us afresh and anew. Fill us, Lord, afresh and anew with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty, Lord, of your Holy Spirit. Demonstrate the power of your Holy Spirit. Lots of everybody who is gathering on from your Holy Spirit by the power of your Holy Spirit. Save those who don't know your Savior. Revive those who do. Uh, Lord, help our maestro to make the necessary changes at the bottom as I uh, spoke to uh, everybody about on yesterday, even on this one. And Holy Father God, I do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would cast out the devil and the demons of hell and the satanic, demonic spirit of Judas, betrayal, and sabotage. 
cast out the satanic demonic spirit of hindrance, the spirit of Sanballat and Tobias. Lord, out of the hearts and minds and lives of the people here and out there, Lord, I know that human beings don't like for me, Christian, so-called Christian people don't like for me to pray like that. They say, they say foolish things like we give the devil too much credit. I think uh, the opposite is the problem. We're not recognizing the devil uh, fighting against us. For some, don't even believe the devil exists, and that's exactly what he wants us to do. Uh, but Lord, we know that uh, we have an enemy, and he's constantly fighting against us, especially those of us who are proclaiming the gospel and preaching your holy word. And so, Holy Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, help us to be prayerful, sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful. Please rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts from this time and from the remainder of this day in our lives and help us to pray without ceasing. Help us to humble ourselves, to to seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways and to repent and get back to you, our first love. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, Dr. Stephen Shannock said, a proud faith is as much a contradiction as a humble devil. And he's right about that. Regarding this passage from the Word of God, the Bible Knowledge Commentary says the psalmist prayed that the Lord would cut off flattering, proud, lying lips. These people were filled with pride. They were boastful. They were arrogant, assuming that through propaganda, flattery, deception, they could achieve their goals. Saying we will triumph with our tongues. They assumed they could do as they please just by the use of their lying tongues and their proud spirits and attitudes and words. Who is our master? They asked. David wanted God to destroy them and end their arrogant boasting. May I say to you ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, many of this tribe still among us, if not more so now than ever. These people who arrogantly and with great pride think they can, by using deception, by lying, by trickery, with their arrogant selves, they think they can reach their goals by talking a good game being so proud and arrogant, they think that people will believe everything they say. And uh, one of the worst individuals that you ever want to be around is a person who is like that. You may have some in your family. I do. You may have some in your church. No doubt you do. 
They're so stinking proud, so arrogant. They really do believe in their own con game. They really do believe they can fool the people of God, that they can just talk their way out of anything that they can lie and cheat and be dishonest and 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 make you believe them and 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 they they believe deep down in their hearts that they can reach their goal by being proud and arrogant and being a con man and a con woman nothing but liars and hypocrites these are they beloved who believe their own lies. Have you ever been around people like that? They believe their own lies and they lie so much. They believe the lies themselves and watch this. They will get angry with you if you don't believe the lie you're telling them. They're so they're that proud and arrogant. Their father is the devil. Because the devil is nothing but a lie. You have to watch people like that. And if you're going to feed them at all, you must feed them out of a long handled spoon. And may God help you if you have a spouse that way, a wife that way, a husband that way, a child that way. You better pray hard and you better pray long. And you better depend on God's discernment You could because you're going to need it. You, you got to be able to tell whether or not they're lying. And almost every time they open their mouth, these kinds of folk, they're going to be lying. Every time they open their mouth is a lie. You got to watch them. And if you're going to feed them at all, you better feed them out of a long handle spoon. You got to watch them. These are Judas's, sand ballots. Deceivers, Tobiases, Demases, Alexander the Coppersmiths. These are the hypocrites in your life, the phonies, the fakes. Lifted up in pride and arrogancy, they think they can bamboozle you and fool the people of God. Little do they know. The true people of God, they have their number coming in the dough. They can look at you and see that you're nothing but a fraud. And if you get a check in your spirit about a joker like this, believe it. Stop doubting yourself. Some of you women need to believe it. And stop being fooled and bamboozled and tricked by these proud jokers. In the words of Dr. Fred Price, who can talk your panties right off of you before you know anything. I don't care if you like it or not. That's what Dr. Fred uh, Price said. I didn't say it. I'm just, I'm just quoting what he said. And, and you know it has, it has happened, so don't look crazy. Beloved, in this psalm, David expresses his displeasure with those who speak wickedly, proudly, arrogantly, with the lying flattery. See, those who are truly born again and saved, we can't stand flattery. Don't even come with that, because we got your number coming in the door. We can see right through you. We know you're a devil. And sometimes we'll say, no, don't come in with all that, man. Just get to the point. He finds refuge in God, knowing that he will cut off those who speak lies and flattery in pride and in arrogancy, and those who speak pridefully. These are con men. Some are in the church. Con women. They get up in the morning determined to bamboozle somebody 
fool somebody, trick somebody out of something. They get, listen to me, watch this. Watch this. They get pleasure out of trying to fool somebody. Out of being proud and arrogant and lying to somebody. Uh, and they get pleasure if you halfway believe it. The devil drives them because the devil is their father. That's how the devil got kicked out of heaven, through pride. David was disgusted with these wicked people. These hypocrites. These phonies. These fakes. Not just because of the words they said, but because of the their prideful, arrogant spirit that they set it in and that they have. I pointed out to you last week, and I'm going to say it again. You can sit down and read a book with a prideful person, a proud person. They're going to turn their head away. They're not going to listen. If you call on them to read, they're not going to pay any attention. Here you are taking time out of your schedule to try to help them to be free. Because along with having Jesus in your life, uh, knowledge can set you, uh, set you free to accomplish great things and do great things. They'll turn their head. They'll go to another site on the computer or on their phone. They will not, you see, these are proud, arrogant, stubborn people. And what, listen to me very carefully. Proud, arrogant, stubborn, lying people. They are the most ignorant and the dumbest people on earth. That's right, I said it and I mean it. I'm, telling, I'm not telling what I think, I'm telling what I know. I have dealt with these people. They are the dumbest most ignorant people on earth because see the pride in them blocks all doors of real knowledge understanding and insight you know why because they think they know everything they truly believe in their con artist spirit and mind that they can bamboozle their way through life that they can skate through life that they can fool people through life that they can act like they read the book. And that's why they fail their courses. That's why they fail out of college. Then they lie about it and try to fool you into thinking they graduated or they're close to graduating and they're total failures. You know why? Because they are so doggone proud they won't read the book. And you know they won't read the book because of their pride. So you read the book with them and to them, and they still won't read it. And watch this. After you have read the book to them, you spend hours and days doing it. Guess what? You ask them one easy question, and excuse the double negative, but they don't know nothing. They don't know anything. And have you have you have you ever been around people? They read. You see you see them reading the, reading the Bible. You see them reading other books. And then when you ask them something, they don't know. Excuse the double negative. They don't know ne nothing. The Negroes don't know nothing. You know why? The pride in them won't let them receive anything. You know why? Because they already think they know everything. And may God help you if you have a spouse like that or a child like that, or a student like that. And see, listen to me very carefully. That's why some of you mothers, some of you fathers too, you're mad at the devil because you're, you're stuck home with your children. And everybody's talking about keeping you stuck with them because they're not going to open the school. All, listen to me very carefully. All the smart people in America, they're not going to open the school. You've got to be very, very dumb to do that. 
in the midst of this raging plague. And any parent, as far as I'm concerned, who sends their children to a public school or a private school or a Christian school with this plague raging like this all across the country, to me that is child abuse. And if the child dies of coronavirus, as far as I'm concerned, you ought to be convicted of, of a manslaughter, at least. I say that, oh, some of your eyes have not blinked yet. I say it boldly. I say it because I'm saying it to people who are filled with the American spirit and not God's Holy Spirit, not concerned about your own children. You'd rather sacrifice your children and risk the lives of your children and risk your own life to get rid of your children. And one of the reasons why is because you're proud as the devil and you have proud as the devil children who you can't teach anything, don't, they don't want to learn anything, and, and you want to send them and put them on the ch off on the children. Watch this. Listen to me very carefully. I'm talking about sending your children to school in a plague. That's like sending your children to school with 50-pound uh, hair falling down on the way. And there are, some, listen to me, there are some people who are still trying to make it to school with hair falling out of the sky weighing 50 pounds just to get rid of their children. But listen to me very carefully. If your children don't obey you, they're not going to obey the t one teacher in the class they don't know. And I promise you, I assure you, my beloved, I guarantee you, in the words of Samuel Madison, I guarantee you. He graduated from Columbia University. I don't know why he kept saying, I guarantee you in the past tense. But he's a, from the South, from South Carolina. I don't know. <laughs> from Milledgeville. I guarantee you, my beloved, you hear me, you hear me well, black people, white people, red people, yellow people, everything you tell your child not to do as soon as they get out of your sight, you mock it down, they're going to do it. If you tell them to wear gloves all the time, they're going to take the gloves off as soon as they get on the campus and throw them in the trash or put them in their pocket and put them back on when they see your face to pick them up. Uh, if you tell them to wear that mask as soon as you pull off from dropping them off at the school, you mark it down, you believe what I tell you, they're going to snatch that mask off their face, every last one of them, and they're going to kiss the first person they see. I'm talking about your children. So what are you talking about sending them to school? They don't even listen to you. You mark my words, they can draw a circle around their desk. That's the wrong thing to do because your rebellious, disobedient children are going to not only walk out of the circle, they're going to run out of the circle, and they're going to jump and skip out of the circle and stay in somebody else's circle the whole day long. Have you lost your mind, people? These are your children I'm talking about. You think your child is going to sit in the desk in a circle and not go out in their circle and not and wear a mask all day and wear some gloves all day and keep that distance. They're going to be total opposite of that, my dear friend. You don't believe that. Then you're going to want to go through the school as soon as your child comes home coughing and gagging and can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And they're going to make you sign a paper too, by the way. They're going to make you sign a paper that you can't sue the school. I wouldn't go anywhere where I got to sign a paper. I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't go to a church. I wouldn't go anywhere if I got to sign a paper about anything. Political meeting, no, sir. Because you're telling me straight up that I might die. You know your child's not going to do all that. 
staying six feet apart. They're going to kiss each Listen to me. They're going to kiss each other. They're going to have sex in the bathroom. They're going to be uh, smoking and drinking and drugs and not in some, you talking about, you know, being, stay in a circle all day? Uh-uh. They're not even going to be in the classroom. See, I used to be a child in the public school system. We didn't go to school. Are you kidding me? We went to the donut shop. You dropped, we, we rode the bus to school. We took the transportation to the school to get to where we wanted to go. And we went to the donut shop and stayed all morning. We skipped class. We didn't go to Mrs. Brown's class. We went someplace else, under the bleachers somewhere, with a girl, went to her house with her parents at work, got in the car somewhere. There were days we didn't even go to school at all. Are you kidding me? And that was back in the 70s. You're going to definitely have that child, um, have that, uh, have your child with a, a, a make sure that child has a, a way to get in touch with them. So they're going to have a cell phone now in the coronavirus plague. But they're not going to use that cell phone to contact you, my beloved. Don't, 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 don't be foolish now. They're going to, as soon as they get off the bus, as soon as you drop them off, and, and you, they're going to say, bye, Mom, I love you. And then they're going to text, okay, let's hook up. Text uh, somebody, okay, I'll meet you over there behind the, uh, behind the fence over there, okay? I, 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 I have missed you all summer long. Oh, yes. Some texting is going to be going on, but they're not going to be texting you. Some calling is going to be going on, but they're not going to be calling you, and they won't be in class either. And you can't even, once they once you drop them off, they're not going to let you in the school. As old as you are. Because they know you got the coronavirus. So you can't even check on your child. With your proud self. Selfish self, only concerned about yourself, want to be free from your children for three or four, five, eight hours a day. Back to the message as I digress. This spirit makes them refuse to stop speaking evil and reject God as Lord over their lives. And I have so much more to say. But I've said enough today. And we'll pick this up on next week if the Lord tarries his coming and we live. But that pride will keep them lying, being arrogant, thinking that they can bamboozle people. I know you've been around at least one person like this. They're just as ignorant as they want to be. Oh, they may have a degree, but they've never read a book. Listen to me, I excuse the double negative, they don't know nothing. Just as, listen to me, these proud, you could listen to me. A proud person is just as dumb as he or she wants to be. I don't care if you like it or not. Proud people are just as dumb and ignorant as they can be. If they look like they're reading the book, they're not reading it. If they read a few words, it goes right through them because they're, 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 they're impervious to knowledge. They're impervious to anybody putting some valuable knowledge in their heads and in their minds and in their hearts. And they stay ignorant all of their lives. They don't communicate well because they're evil as hell. Some are demon-possessed. The devil has their tongue locked up, has locked up their tongue and their ears. They always have a nasty, dumb, demonic attitude, always thinking. They're so ignorant. They always think somebody is picking on them. They always think that somebody is trying to hurt them or get them. Uh, they're like the little kid that has a nickel in their hand. Their uncle wants to put a $5 bill, but they hold the hand so tight the, the blood almost comes out of their fingers. The uncle can't even give them the $5 bill because they won't open their hands. 
These are they who are proud and arrogant. You can't help them. This is one of the reasons why God dealt with the sin of pride from Genesis to Revelation. He warned people against pride, uh, being proud. The sin he hates the most, number one on the list, is pride and a proud look. You can't help people like this. And so wise people leave them alone. Don't try to teach them anything because you're wasting your time, wasting your breath. They are stuck in their pride, foolishness, stubbornness. They're ignorant. They're dumb. They will never learn anything as long as they're proud. As long as they will not humble themselves and listen to somebody else. You don't go to college to be proud. You don't go to high school to be proud and not listen to somebody and not learn. You get you pay good money to learn something, to get something in your head that you can use to make your life better and, and to make the life of others better. Pride will sink you every time. Pride will take you down, down, down to underneath the ground. There are millions in hell because of the sin of pride. Satan, remember, was cast out of heaven because of pride. Pride. Eve and Adam put us in the mess we're in today because of the pride of life. Marriages have been destroyed. Families have been destroyed. We have an epidemic of, of, of step families through, the, through divorce and remarriage, uh, which is a destruction of the lives of so many people, especially the children, because of stubborn pride. We're in this pandemic. We're in this plague pandemic. Primarily because of pride. This is why the first thing God tells the people of God, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Secondly, pray. That's a, that's a humbling act. Third humbling act, seek my face. Fourth humbling act, turn from your wicked ways. Fifth humbling act. Repent. Number six. All the way in the New Testament. Jesus basically tells you to humble yourself down and get back to me. Your first love. You've got to humble yourself down and let God take all of that prideful trash out of your life. God loves you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Now, dear friend, the question is, if you were to die today, where would you go, heaven or hell? If you don't know, here's what you need to do. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to understand that you are a sinner, that you've done wrong, in your life against God that you have broken God's Ten Commandments you need to humble down and listen and pay attention and accept the fact that you've done these sins you've broken the commandments of God you have lied before haven't you admit it you have stolen something before haven't you admit it from your little brother from your father a pen from the job you have uh, lusted in your heart after somebody or something. You've covered it with other people have. You've dishonored and disobeyed your parents. <coughs> You've dishonored God. <coughs> You've dishonored God by taking his name in vain. And because of that, you're on your way to a devil's hell. 
For the Bible says the wages, the payment, the paycheck that you're going to get at the end of your life is death. Your body is going to die, and then your soul is going to go to eternal death in hell. By the way, Jesus Christ, the meek and lowly one, the loving one, preached more on hell than anybody else in the whole Bible. Jesus Christ created hell for the devil and his angels. Not for us, but if we live like the devil and act like the devil and don't believe on Christ, we will go to hell with the devil and his demons. Jesus Christ described hell as a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Jesus Christ described hell as a place of weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. So hell is bad news, very much so. Uh, And so hell is bad news indeed. But I have some good news for you. Notice what the same Jesus Christ said in John 3.16. It's all about Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. And you need to believe in him as he's going to tell you to here in a few seconds. Here's what Jesus Christ said to you and to me in light of the fact that you are a sinner who has broken God's Ten Commandments and who is on his way to hell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Notice the words, for God so loved the world. If you are in this world, God loves you. That he gave his only begotten son. He gave up his only son, Jesus Christ. uh, The only one who lived a perfect life. Jesus Christ, the God-man who walked on water, who raised the dead, who healed the sick who fed the hungry, who gave sight to the blind, who gave hearing to the deaf. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, who never committed a sin in his life, in word, thought, or deed. He then chose to become the sacrificial lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. That's what John the Baptist called him. Behold, the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sin of the world. He chose to suffer, bleed, and die on the cross for your sins and mine. He was buried, and he rose on the third day. And all he tells you to do to be saved, right here, that whosoever believeth in him, he was talking about himself, should not perish, that is, perish in hell, which I've already talked to you about, but have everlasting life in heaven to be with God, to be with Jesus, to be with the angels of God, and to be with the beloved family of the saints. So, dear friend, notice that Jesus did not say you have to join a church to be saved or that you have to be in a church to be saved. Notice that Jesus did not say you had to get baptized to get saved. He said simply, believe in me. The word believe means to trust in, to have faith in. Whosoever means anybody at any time, that includes you. Pray and ask him to save your soul today, believing in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know how to pray the sinner's prayer, follow me. I've led many thousands in this prayer down through the years, and I'll be glad to lead you. For the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe in your heart in Jesus Christ that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again. Let's pray together. Repeat after me phrase by phrase, Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in your sight. I have broken your Ten Commandments, as was mentioned earlier. 
For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in you, Lord Jesus, as you told me to do, I believe with all of my heart that you suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins, that you took my place, and that you paid my sin debt. I believe with all of my heart that you died for my sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul from hell, even though I don't deserve it. Help me to repent. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins and to change. And to turn from my wicked ways. And to follow you in the new life, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name I pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you, that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved from hell, and you are on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God, dear friend. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ Jesus, please go to gospellightsociety.com and download my book free of charge titled What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. And the next time for me, by the grace of God is within the next 10 to 15 minutes when I will come back and do the how to stay and how to survive the coronavirus plague briefing live podcast recording. God bless you until then. Let's all stand for prayer. Holy Father God, we give you the glory, we give you the praise, and we give you the honor. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word, your holy gospel, your holy spirit, and most of all, your holy son, Jesus Christ, for without you, we can.